Thank you, thank you, praise and worship team. You don't stop me up here, coming out will up here tonight. Praise God. Praise God. But it's already done. You're not here fighting for a victory, that's not one. It's already won. We are here believing. And the word of God says, though we did not see it, yet we believe. Huh? Because the one who told us we count him faithful. That what he says he will do. And what he says was done, was done. And so despite what the devil is trying to do around us, we know we believe the report of the Lord. Hello, somebody. We shall believe the report of the Lord. And his report says I'm healed. His report said I'm free. His report said I'm more than a conqueror. His report said I'm an overcomer. His report said I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I go over and not under. I lend and don't borrow. His report. My God said, All of this is mine. Woo! The kingdom, hallelujah, is my inheritance. And I got a right to it in Jesus' name. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on, somebody give him the praise in it. Hallelujah. We have much ground to cover tonight, and I'm not keeping you very long, so we got to get right into it. And we're talking about the word, about receiving the servant of God. Receiving what? The servant of God. Hallelujah. Is receiving God. Receiving the servant of God is receiving God. Why is he called the servant of God? Because he serves God and he's on a mission that God has given specific instruction to complete and therefore receiving him is receiving those instructions and also complying with the work that he has come to do. Hello somebody. And you read that in Psalms 118 Verse 26, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Everyone does not bless those who come in the name of the Lord. But we need to know not everyone that says Lord, Lord will enter. And we know that, that not all that say the Lord are of the Lord. But you need to identify those who are. Hallelujah, because the Lord says by their fruit... You will know them, huh? So he says, blessed is he who comes in the name of... We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Who have they blessed? The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Matthew 23, verse 39. Echo the same sentiment as Jesus is ministering. They know that they must say, blessed is he who what? who comes in the name of the Lord. For it says, for I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Jesus was leaving that city, leaving those people and say, you will not see me anymore until you say, until you repent and come to that point of reception to who the Lord sent and the work and word that God has sent them to do. This, the Lord said, you will not see me again. Come on, somebody. And that would not be good news for them because they could not get themselves out of the mess that they're in. That's why God sent one to help them out. It is so amazing how many pray to the Lord, help me. And then when help is sent, they say, no, I don't want that one. Huh? They want to tell the Lord the help to send. But God have all authority to choose who he chooses without your opinion on it. And he makes the decision on that. Who is going to say no? So, and you then must know either you comply or you are left behind. But he says, those who say blessed is he who comes, position themselves to receive him. 
and to receive the benefits and blessing and anointing that he brings huh? praise God it's also in Luke chapter 13 verse 22 to 33 Luke chapter 13 verse 22 to 35 that is praise God is declared blessed is he who comes huh? he went throughout the cities and villages now we know what he was going through the cities and villages teaching come on teaching the gospel of the kingdom as he stated in Matthew 4 verse 23 and Matthew 9 verse 25 that's what he went teaching through the cities and he says and journeying towards Jerusalem then one said to him Lord are there few who are saved are there few who are saved and he said to them what he said to them strive to enter through the narrow gate huh for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Funny, he says here, they seek to enter. They are not like the ones who are not seeking. They actually seek but will not be admitted. Watch that. He says, many will seek to enter and will not be able. And when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he will answer and say to you what? I do not know you where you are from. My God in heaven. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence. These are people who come in the house of God. <laughs> they are not the ones out here just partying and galanting and doing a man of evil but they actually show some kind of reverence and respect for God and he says they will begin to say we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets but he will say I tell you I do not know you where you are from depart from me all you what work because in other words you're still practicing sin so all my preaching and all you say you eat and drink and in my presence and see me it doesn't add up for much because it has not have the impact what i came to do on you come on somebody you got it and, and i meet people like that every day even today <laughs> oh my god that come and say man is a good pastor man Man, he help people, man. Man, he do good. This man really is a man of God. But they are not obeying the word. They are still in sin. Compliments and nice comments is not what I'm after. The mission is to point people to the Lord and that they live holy and come out of sin. It's not a popularity contest about getting famous. Come on now. You're not here for fame. We are here for the people to be gained to the kingdom of God. Amen. He says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He said when you see Abraham and Isaac huh? and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves what? Thrust out. So they had some place in there already. That's why they could say we were there eating and drinking with you. They were in the kingdom. But they lost that position. Because of how they respond to who the Lord sent. This is a serious word. For many that think once they end the sea and it's all good. Huh? He said they will come from the east. Huh? and the west from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God and indeed there are, there are last who will be first there are last that who will be that will say first will be last and the last shall be he said they are first who will be last and he says on that very day some Pharisees came saying to him get out and depart from here for Herod wants to kill you Huh? <laughs> give him more and he said to them go tell that fox oh come on Herod was pretty much king to the Jews 
But he couldn't stay at king while being under the kingship of Caesar. Because Caesar already ordered one king. Get it? That's why when he heard the king was born, he wanted to go kill him. You get it? But so, so he's now sending out word he wants to get rid of this Jesus fellow. Come on now. But Jesus sent a message to him. <laughs> oh, this Jesus don't sound like the, the movie Jesus, the matter, man. Oh, this Jesus sound kind of fiesty, you know. Mm. Sound like you know if you talk in your heart to him, he will answer you. Uh, it don't sound like they, 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 nobody is Christian. I guess they would say Jesus is not a Christian. Uh, he said, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfect. Lord of mercy. In other words, are you trying to stop this? And come on, talk to me, somebody. You can't stop this. God, this is not a work of man. This is the work of God. He said, nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside. Huh? Should perish outside of Jerusalem. Come on now. Hello. Oh, Jerusalem, he says. Jerusalem, the one who what? Kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. They pray for prophets to be sent. And when they are sent, they kill them. Stone them. Run them away. Come on. How often, he says, I wanted to gather you. Gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But you, you were not willing. You wouldn't let that happen at all. Come on. You were very careful to keep that from happening. My God. He says, see, your house is left to you desolate. Come on. They didn't see that then. You know. They were seeing their synagogues full. And their pretty building that even the disciples look and say, Master, you're so pretty the temple is. But the Lord had already seen its ruins. You see the word of God will give you a vision. That you see beyond the present appearance into where it's heading. Hello, somebody. And can call a spear a spear. You're not fooled by how it look now. Because you know if it continues on that route, what it going to become. And Jesus turned to them and said, man, not one stone going to be left on another year. The same place they and on worship is going to be destroyed. No, sir. But they didn't see that then they were still walking through big and proud in the city. But the Lord said, your house is left, not will be, you know. He says, see. Come on, that takes spiritual eyes to see it. Because what they were seeing physically didn't look like no house going destroy. And look like everything was continuing the same. But a prophet is speaking to them. He's seen more than what they see now. And he says, see, your house is left desolate. And as surely I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say what? You must welcome who comes. In the name of the Lord, what you say? Until you welcome who comes in the Lord, the Lord is saying, I'm not coming back here. Lord Jesus, come on, somebody. 
And Paul, many years later, spoke about that city, Jerusalem, as a place of bondage. Huh? In Galatians 4, he speak of that city, saying, we are not of the city, Jerusalem, over in Israel here. He said, we are of the heavenly Jerusalem. So if they all would have visited the Jerusalem over there, so they're getting closer to Jesus. Because Paul already writes about that and he's a Jew. And you're a Gentile. When people get closer to Jesus, they go over Jerusalem. And you don't know your purpose. So if you know in a religion, because religion do a work for you until you know Christ. Hello, somebody. See, Paul talk about it. Come on. In verse 25. But we can start from verse 22 of Galatians 4. He says, for it is written that Abraham had two sons. One by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh. Remember the word of God, Paul declared that not all born of the flesh is an Israelite. Because being an Israelite or being a Jew, being of a people of God is more than what happened in it with the flesh. With blood relations. It has to do with the quality of life you live. Through the faith you receive. Through Christ. And that faith is testified of in Abraham. Come on. He says he was of the born woman. Was born according to the flesh. In other words. His work and being was by the flesh. But the he of the free woman. Was through promise. The word and the Holy Spirit. Brought forth that one. He's speaking of Isaac as the symbol that they are using between Ishmael, that born of the slave woman, Agar, and Isaac, born of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Yeah? He says, which things are symbolic, for these are two covenants. These are what? So he refer to the two sons as two covenants, as we have it in our Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Old covenant and a new one. Christ sealed the new one with his blood. The old covenant sealed with the blood of animals. So he says, they, they are two, they come from Abraham. But he says, but pay attention to the story. He says then, one from Mount Sinai which gave birth to bondage. Speaking of when they received the law. Which is Agar, he says. The mother, but something produced from that. When they were just Jews coming out of Egypt, something produced them that, that made them become a nation under these laws. But he says, man, where you think they get the law? They get the law because they never believe the promise. If they believe the promise, they would need the law. They'd be walking by faith in the promise. But because they didn't believe the promise, that's why every time a need show up and a crisis show up, they want to go back to Egypt. The same place the promise was given that take them out to tell them you're going to have your own land. God's going to give you your own place. Your God's going to take you out of slavery. God's going to make you free. God's going to give you your own land not that work by all your work here in Egypt. That you have to make trenches from the river to bring water to the, where you're planting your vegetation. But God will minister water from heaven. What he called farmer and latter rain. Early rain and latter rain in season. He says God is providing the water for the land where he's sending you. He don't have a river there but heaven will become a constant sprinkling supply. To ensure the fruitfulness of your crop. Huh? So he says, it's a different place I lead in you and where you're left. And some don't get it all now. He says, for Agar is that Mount Sinai in Arabia. Not true? That corresponds to what? Jerusalem, which now is. And that Jerusalem, which now is, what he say about them? And is in bondage with her children. She not free. Come on. And you go, go over there and say, if you honor in slaves, you're going to become more like Christ. Because you have to honor God's people, Israel. So you're going to go over Israel and walk where Jesus walk. 
Eternity. Don't understand this thing is not a physical thing. It is a spiritual move. Come on somebody. You got this? So what else did he say? Huh? The Jerusalem above is free. Which is the mother of us all. That us all is speaking about those in Christ. As he said, those under the law are not in Christ. He says, if you are in Christ, you are under grace and not under the law. Because the law is for the unrighteous. Christ made you righteous. That's the difference between the old covenant and the new. The old of the people in bondage, that's why they're giving the law. What they knew have the people in the promise. The fulfillment of the promise is in Christ. Woo! Glory to God. For it says, For it is written, Rejoice, O barren. Who was the barren? Was it the, the, the slave woman? No, she was a, she could have a dozen pennies for Abraham in a month, man. Praise God. But Sarah. Having a child in old age when she was barren from youth. Huh? And past childbearing stage having a child. That was not done by the potency of Abraham. That was done by the fulfillment of God's promise to him that his wife would give him a child. So he said that wasn't done by the flesh. That was done by promise. You hear that one? In other words, he said, to come into this life of the kingdom. He said, you can't come into it by the flesh. It's by the work of the word and the Holy Spirit of God. Working in you to make you a true son, a true child of God. You can't enter the kingdom by your own works. My God, my God, my God. And he says, they would not know that except they receive the one who God endured with the instructions to bring it to them. Otherwise, they would still think otherwise and think that their religion is going to bring them into it. But because they reject who God sent to help them, then they still remain in their ignorance. Still reaching for a righteousness they cannot attain. Just like they teach them today. You know you can't perfect but try. You know nobody no good but try. You know none of us no righteous but try your best. God ain't rewarding you for no try. It's not the triers, it's the doers of the word that will be blessed. Ah, It's more than just giving an effort. It's getting the job done. You hear we sing it's already done. Is a job done? Is not a job just you're trying to do? Ah, huh? religion give you a lot of trying to do, but all you try, you try to do from your born till you're dead, you can't done. But Christ is not a religion. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. <laughs> all the righteous requirements are met in Him. And he said, if you're in him, you also of his kind. Come on, because both he that sanctifies and the one who is sanctified are one. Huh? So that's why he says, no brethren, be attention to the thing. It's not the one that had a holy for children that the Lord bless him. But it's the one who just have one. Oh, you don't get it. Oh, Jesus. Talk to me now. You see, there's a lot of religion that come out of religion. <laughs> but it still leads to bondage. It don't stop anybody in religion from sinning. But there's one that comes from God that is Christ. And all who are in him gain power over the flesh, power over sin, and power over the devil and power over the systems of this world 
and they are declared more than conquerors. Hello, somebody. You got this? He called him the free one. The what? How? So he says, there is a joy that comes with this one that the slave woman don't have. <laughs> oh, I love the word of God. There's a joy because she knows that her conception and delivery did not come by natural means. This was not done by man, but done by God. Come on, somebody. She knows that any scientist, any doctor, any great minds would stand and say, no, this is not possible. But it was done by God. The, 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 the slave woman could not say that because anyone with natural means could get her pregnant and she have a child my God but the report he says with this barren one caused this barren one to break forth and shout with joy and my God there's a joy that come that even when you want to be quiet you have to, my God you have to say something hallelujah because this is not something done by man. I said this is something done by God. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. When God does something, it will done. Hello somebody and he don't need no makeup. He don't need no touch up. He don't need no straighten up. He don't need no additive. You understand it? Thing? It comes straight from the throne and it's well done. Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And he's the maker of heaven and earth. And when he sent his son, he says, this one is perfect. Without spot, without blemish. Meeting the full requirements that I want. And anybody in him will share the same. Oh, come on somebody. And he said, you have to make sure then that you're really plugged in and drawing from the source to produce out of his kind. Come on. Hallelujah. So he says, we brethren, we brethren, look at that in verse 28. We brethren, as Isaac was our what? In other words, we're not born by natural means. It's not our parents bring us into being children of God. That natural means of birth don't qualify us for the kingdom. It's the born again. And that was done by God. And I don't care if it was your uncle get your mother pregnant. Or your grandfather. How your father himself getting started pregnant and you're born. That don't have none to do with your status in the kingdom. Because that was naturally done. But God said, here is one I going to do. Oh my God, that is flawless. I don't hear anybody here, but he said, this one is done by God. And who can find fault with God? Oh! Come on, somebody. He said, this Isaac is somewhat like us. My God, we came and they're looking at us just like any other children. But this one is different. Because the birth process for this one was not done by man's genes. Lord Jesus. But it's done by the genes of God. God's DNA into this one. That make this one do it upon human flesh. Responding differently to crisis. And to challenges and things that come against them. You get this one. So he said this one is born of promise. Religion with all its activity cannot produce that. Woo! But Christ can. He said to as many as receive him. To them he gave the right. To become children of God. But he says there's a persecution that arises between those who are born of the spirit. And those who are born of the flesh. What verse 29 said. But as he who was born according to the flesh. That Ishmael. 
then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit that was Isaac he says even so it is now now the rest that not stop my God that was thousands of years before Christ came and thousands of years after Christ came bled and died and ascent it's still happening so do you think they're going to change you better get this one right because some really sit on into religion praying for them to change you know praying to save the world and the Lord never tell us say we are the salt of the world he said we are the salt of the earth we're preserving the earth but he said we are the light of the world we are exposing the world ah light don't come to see it come to expose baby hello somebody things can't hide when the light turn on because mm -hmm, it show up things that are hidden in the dark hello somebody so we're not coming to save the world ah, come on we're here to save the earth because the earth is the lord's and he said the meek shall inherit the earth you never say inherit the world ah some people will get that later so he says that so then brethren we are not you see that one verse 30 and 31 nevertheless what does scripture say so in other words he said it's not just god said it but god command that it should be written down recorded for future reference because god knew them sitting on their way to continue like that no wonder john called some of them generation a viper their mother 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 was a viper and their mother was a viper and them come as viper and them beat me a viper too whole generation brood of them serpents your things to the lord no know them the lord said brethren eh? what scripture say cast out the band woman and her son he said no let us all get together and see how we can work together no you're not gonna work good with a snake there <laughs> snake now come if you look pretty and nice round you like decoration and come with a sting and a deadly sting too come on now so then what he say cast out the band woman huh? and her son for the son of the band woman shall not be here with the son of the so then brethren we are not the children of the band woman which are we the children of the free now who is the free the sons of god who he says man they have ceased from sinful activity to engage and practice righteousness unto the lord come on jesus spoke about that to those jews that believe in him come on in john john 8 yes verse 30 to 36 he already tell those jews jews were there who believed on him but he said to them don't you believe on me because of the miracles that don't save you know you need to adapt the teachings is the teachings make you a disciple and is being a true disciple that prepare you and make you a son so it's not abracadabra you just believe in the lord and your son uh -uh. he said there's a work process that is done through the word and the holy spirit on you to move you from just being children of men to children of god and he says it is supernaturally done but it requires your cooperation and your obedience come on now you have to humble yourself so jesus was saying to those jews who believed in him in john 8 verse 30 to 36 he spoke these words and many believed in him so he then spoke to those jews who believed him he's not speaking to the ones who don't believe him now he's referring this point of statement to those who believed him and said if you who believe in me if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed or then he says you will truly be my disciples 
He's saying to them, then you are not my disciples just for believing in me. You need to abide in my teaching. You get what Jesus said, and it not changed yet, because he's still the head of the church. Come on now. So he says, and you shall know the truth. You know the truth through what? Through the word that he teaches. And that truth produces the life. That makes you son and be free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? So clearly, though they believe in him, he saw them still as sinners. They were still in bondage to sin. They are still children of the slave woman. So that's why he called them slaves. And they were not pleased with him calling them slaves while they consider themselves through their religion children of Abraham who are free and never been in bondage to anyone. That's what they said in the next verse. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free. If we're free already, we don't need to be made free. We're already free. That's what they're saying to Jesus. We are all right as we are. What are you talking about? You got it? And what did Jesus respond to them saying? Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Now, this is not saying whoever committed sin is a slave. Otherwise, everybody would still remain a slave. But notice the word that is used there between whoever and sins. Commits. It's not whoever committed sin. Whoever had committed sin in their past. All of us have committed sin in our past. Except Christ. But he says, he comes to set those slaves free. And if he set them free, they are no longer slaves. But no sons. Watch what he says next. He says, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. That means that they not only commit sin, but they continue to. They have not stopped. And if you talk to most Christians today, they will tell you, you cannot stop as long as you are here. So of course, they are telling you, they accept they are slaves, and they'll be slaves until they die. And trust that when they die, the Lord will save them. That is furthest from the truth. Come on somebody. That is not what Jesus taught as the leader of this faith come on now as the apostle and high priest of this faith he teaches us the faith in his word and knowing the truth sets us free from sin look what he says now in verse 35 and 36 a slave does not abide in the house remember he calls the one a slave who is committing sin he says, a slave does not abide in the house forever. That's why they were there saying, we ate with you, we drink with you. We were in your presence. But he said, get away from me. I don't know where you're from. You work as of iniquity. Remember, we read it. We read it before this. Come on. So he says then, if you then know how that fits in, you see why he calls them slaves and said, I don't know you. Because we already read what must be done with the slave. The mother, the born woman, and the slave child must be cast out. And exactly what he said, they will not remain in the house forever. But a son, you get it? A son is one who does the will of the father. And sin is not included in the will. Hello. He says, a son abides in the house for how long? 
forever that's all david could say i will dwell in the house of the lord forever all the days of my life come on now hello how are you going to dwell in there forever if you don't believe you have eternal life if you don't believe that god will keep that promise for him to remain after this flesh has fed come on now you see what i'm talking about but he says that's not the case for the slave the slave will be expelled from the house the slave will be what he says slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son not this son speaking of himself only he says a son anyone who is born of god he says abides forever that is speaking about those he says born of the free woman got it and he says therefore if the son makes you free what he said about that freedom is free indeed come on now but then paul asks how would they believe in this freedom if someone don't teach them it's romans 10 verse 14 to 21 he says that's how the preacher comes in you ask for the help but you don't know how to apply yourself to get the results the word is requiring of you so the lord says i sent help for you someone who is anointed to declare the word not just by lips but the way they live in other words you are not just hear them talking about a life they are not living like the pharisees did because this is not the righteousness of men the lord says this righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the pharisees so he says this is more than the strictest obligation of men to keep some instruction he said this is something that jesus have to disciple you into coming into oh lord have mercy and he says jesus disciple some that sent to declare the same word to you so he said you can come in it of yourself come on he said not even jesus came here of himself not even jesus anointed himself he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel he didn't come of himself so he said oh you going to attain it of yourself that's why help is sent huh but if you're wrestling with your help or oh, you're going to get the help you should you need huh he says how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard how shall they hear without a preacher how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written he says how beautiful are the feet of those who preach that's how that word come in say blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord that's where that verse is quoted from how beautiful are the feet of those he said when they enter among us our hopes and joy jump because they carry good tidings for us from the lord come on somebody but he says the children of the band woman don't respond so to the free remember it wasn't just agar that had some issues against sarah but agar put some tendencies in her son ishmael against sarah too that's why sarah said both she and her son must leave you get it watch the thing you know so he says how beautiful are the feet there are persons who will not welcome those who come with such word and the lord was quoting that 
to the Jews to say, your, your resistance in welcoming me is coming from a source that is resistant to my source. Are you hearing this? I said, those who love the source, welcome those who come from the source. Woo, come on. And he says, they would say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. My God. Who bring glad tidings of good things. You say, when you're oppressed and battered and bruised and afflicted and tormented, how good it is when somebody brings good news to you. How refreshing it is. How precious huh? to receive something like that in a time of despair and hopelessness and ruin and perils. Huh? He said, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, who is a preacher himself, a prophet, says, Lord, Lord, who has believed our report. Isaiah believed it. That's why he was declaring it. But he had to ask the Lord. Who believe? Come on. You know. One man had to ask Jesus. Who shall be saved? Unbelief was so strong in their midst. It had no means of welcoming or receiving the sender. Come on, somebody. You got it? But it, it says, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says what? Lord, who has believed our report? Huh? And he says, so then what? So he says, not everybody got the faith. Why not everybody got the faith? Because not everybody willing to hear this and take the report to heart to believe it and practice it. That's why he says, but so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses say what Moses said to them. The Lord told Moses to tell them that. Moses didn't say that to them of himself. He said to them, the Lord said, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. You're boasting you're a nation. I'm going to provoke you to jealousy by the ones I use who you consider not a nation. Who you consider not a people is them I'm going to use. Those who you call infidel and dogs and heathen. Huh? Those who you call the worst of sinners, I would never do what they did. The Lord said, I'm going to bring them in. And things that you hear that say you would never do what they did in sin, but you're in here not doing what God tells you should, you should do, them going to come in and do it. That's what the Lord is saying. I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I'll move you to anger by a foolish nation. A nation you don't regard. A people you have no respect for and things that they're not much. God said, I'm going to bring them in and show you up. Because pride have got your nose up in the ear. You can't even see what's under your nose. Come on, somebody, because you're so prideful and stuff up. The Lord said, I will use a people you would think are least well expected to be used. And they're the one I'm going to use to get the job done. That's why I said the first shall be the last. 
and the last be the first he says you did a long time but someone coming after you and outrun you because you have been slothful towards the work of God but they who God have forgiven of a lot of sins they go and come in willing to do anything for the Lord they don't mind to get down on their knees and wipe the floor the same one you can't tell when last year about wipe her does but you're coming stuck up like a peacock like nobody can hardly talk to you because you got your 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 your, your ticket already with Christ come on somebody but the Lord said, eh, eh, you need to hear the one who the Lord said. Or too late will be your cry. Come on, somebody. Yeah? Give me some more. What did he say? But Isaiah is very bold. He said, Isaiah said it to them before. But Isaiah get even more bold to say more. Of what God told him. He said, I was found. Who was found? Lord was found by those who did not seek him. Isaiah was not just speaking this about the Lord. Isaiah was also speaking this about himself. He represented the Lord amongst the people. Ah, Jesus. So he says, a people, a people who did not seek me they found me they wasn't looking for me but when they hear me they came <laughs> they don't know me from anywhere but once they heard my voice they were magnetically drawn to me and couldn't leave my company a people who I wasn't looking for who was not even looking for me. I was manifest to those who did not ask for me. They didn't even know my name to ask for it. But somehow they were drawn to this man. Huh? What a mighty God. But what he said to Israel. is not the same report to Israel. Israel should be those people who God will be speaking that blessing over as the people who were there as the first who had his oracles and covenant and law and precepts and statutes. But he says, no. All day long, I stretch out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. They stuck to do things their way. They refused to submit to true spiritual leadership. They don't trust nobody but themselves and others and God. My God. They don't trust nobody but themselves and God. And that is a formula for destruction. Because God never preached God alone. That's why Jesus is here. That's why the Holy Spirit came after. That's why Jesus raised up apostles for the church. So he never taught that. So that of course comes from a different source. Huh? Talk to me now. So that mentality came through someone who got hurt and did not release the offense and no one to hold everybody ransom because of their past offense. They have not forgiven. And want God to understand why they have the offense. Why they malfunctioning. It's because other people hurt them. Ah. God give you an answer to that malfunction long time. Say forgive. Because forgiveness is not for the offender. It's to release you who is offended. But the cause of the offense. My God, they were not open to receive anything new. They stuck in a whole position. And now God was calling it redundant. 
ready to cut them off because he said all the time I stretch out my hand to you you're still disobedient you're still contrary you're still doing it your way like you're under no leadership you is leading you while you say it's God so of course God is you do the equation come on so he says you have forsaken the way of God hello and Jesus was saying to them you will never see me again until you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord hello didn't Jesus teach them about receiving those who he sent come on Matthew 18 verse 5 Huh? Praise God. He says, Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives who? Receives me. Now he said at a point where he takes a child, hold the child by the hand and lead the child in their midst. He could have all a man, all a woman, but he used a child to say, even if it's someone you believe not as learned, as developed, as strong, as knowledgeable as you, if I only am leading them, you better receive them like you receive me. And what is he saying? That child is not coming in the midst of themselves. He brought the child there. The child is led there by him. So he says, then if someone said the child should not be here, which spirit is speaking to that person to tell him that the child should be brought in our midst? To make, to become the center of focus. That's why he brought the child in the midst. So he says the center of focus around us is a child. <laughs> That's why the Lord says, except you accept this word like a child, you can't enter. You have to humble yourself. God, this is not coming according to what you predetermine it should be. This is coming what God predetermined it should be and right for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he said, he called a little child to him. He called the child. Set him in the midst of them and said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children come on that is talking about little children like the one is leading you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven he's speaking to those already who he calls disciples and saying to them you can come and be trained as disciples and get kicked out and those outsiders tax collectors and, and thieves and adulterers come inside and you get kicked out because of your attitude because of your response to his leadership by who he chooses to lead he says therefore whoever humbles himself what they must do is not God must humble you. Believe me on that one. No, no matter how you think you're humbling, praying, Lord, humble me. That's not a good prayer. No one in the Bible as a prophet from Genesis to Revelation ever asked the Lord to humble them. Because the Lord knows say you have the capacity to humble yourself. 
We don't have toothbrush and toothpaste and water and ask the Lord to brush our teeth. He knows you have the ability to do it. And he knows with all the power he has. You still work out. God said he's meek and lowly. He's humble. So he says if you don't have not even a fraction of that kind of power that he has, he said then oh you can humble yourself. Huh? That speaks of a different nature that is coming from Satan. The adversary and he said except you be converted and get rid of that. You can't have no entrance in this. You know? Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child, that Jesus can take his hand and lead him. I never hear the child having a fit and spitting and kicking up and drawing back and calling, Mommy! Daddy! No, he was following Jesus. Jesus didn't say any child. He said like this child. Other children would respond differently. Every child don't respond like that. Some children cannot lead them away from their parents. Or from the gardens they are. But Jesus has walked upon all his child and I lead him. The parents don't mention, nor is there any reference to say the parents running behind to make sure say he go with Jesus. But the child goes with Jesus willingly. The child what? goes with Jesus and the Lord says that willingness and obedience he says is what his disciples must have to have true entry in his kingdom Woo! because he says whoever receives that's where he says it now huh? whoever receives one little child like this in my name who they receive he said they receive me Jesus Christ he said, no, if I don't receive him, after him, I know Jesus Christ. I don't receive him, but I receive Christ. No, Jesus that you say you receive. Say, if you don't receive one of that child that him lead before you, you have not received him. That's his teaching, not yours. Come on now. You got it? Matthew 9, Mark 9, verse 36. Mark 9, verse 36 to 37. Come on. St. Mark 9, verse 36 to 37 says, Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them. When he had taken him in his arms, what he did more in the scripture, he also took the child in his arms. He said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name, receives me. It's not a big child that he couldn't take up in his hand. It's a small child. But he says, who receives this child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives not me. Now that is in the context of me only. But him who sent me. So he said, Jesus, not preach Jesus only. Jesus marked with that message a long time. He said, whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Same way saying, if I send a child in my name and you don't receive the child, you receive me, you re reject me, that send the child. Same way it says, if you reject him, you reject him who sent him. Get the order. Jesus might not change, as just some preacher might change. And then if you get saved, because they're still practicing sin, why didn't talk such weird doctrine? Sin make your vision kind of blurry. So all the revelation you want to get it murky. You have to stop sin to have clarity of vision. And I can tell you that it's true from experience. Sin have to stop for you to get clear revelation. Come on somebody. I'm talking to you on that. Luke 10 verse 16 to 23. Saying Luke 10 verse 16 to 23. Come on. He says, he who hears you, what Jesus said to his disciples, he who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, 
rejects me no man you can't reject jesus you just a pastor you not agree with what you're saying you still agree with jesus you just not agree with you unless i'm not a true apostle if i'm not a true apostle you can't get rid of one day that means i'm a false teacher pretending to be sent by the lord so my doctrine wrong because he didn't send me to do what i'm doing but if I'm sent to do what he's doing, then he already equipped me with the word to tell you. And if you then said, then it's not him, tell me. Then you're saying, is that devil? Tell me if he tell you. So now you're calling the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the devil. Now you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Come on now. It's one thing to lie against Jesus. Another thing to lie against me. Another thing to lie against the Father, but when you lie against the Holy Spirit. The word of God said there is no forgiveness for your ear in this life, nor in the life to come. Because you need to understand who you are dying of. Oh, you better understand that one day. Because if you believe, if a person believes I can be under Christ, but not under the Father in life. And if a person believes they can be under who Christ sent, under Christ, but not under who Christ sent, they still lie. Because they all work as one. That's why Paul was asking the question. When some say, I am a Paul, another one say, I am a Apollos. One other one say, I am a Peter. One other one say, I am a none of apostle name. I am of Christ. Paul had to ask them the question, is Christ divided? I want you to understand this scripture because Paul mashed up there something a long time, you know. And if he had written thousands of years, people still a stumble over it now. Why are they hearing hard? They're slow of heart to get with the word because pride, they hinder them from doing things where they should have done a long time, you know. Until pride is put out of the way, you're going to take a hard, long ride for coming compliance to the Lord because pride no work well with grace. And grace is for the humble. You get it in? Huh? Come on now. He says, he who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. Huh? He who rejects me, rejects him who sent me then they seemed to return with joy saying lord even demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them that i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven huh and behold i give you what authority to trample and serpents and scorpion and over what all the power of the enemy and nothing now, when the Lord said that the things said, then they feel goosebumps. I feel like they're walking into cloud and feel like they're drunk in the spirit. They just had to believe the word spoken out of God mouth said they got the power. And anytime demons show up, they speak as one who have power. Come on now. So they have to believe what Jesus is saying is true. To receive that word and that power that comes with the word. Got it. He says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that spirits are subject to you, but rather what? Rejoice that your names are what? Written in heaven. Come on, somebody. Your names are recorded in the Lamb's book of life as one of Christ's disciples. One that is pointed up as ears of God and joined ears with Christ. Huh? But he said, you can't have this testimony if you don't abide in him and his word abide in you. Come on. Huh? John 15 verse 1 to 8. Come on. He says, there must be a connection between you, the preacher and the word. It can't just be you like say you can know it yourself. Because nobody must get the glory about God. No, it's you looking for the glory for yourself. Because you don't want to 
tell and transmit where you get the revelation from. Who bring you into this? Come on now. You want to be like Jesus only yourself. So he says, look at it. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the... So he don't say he's the vine and he's the father. He says he's the vine and the father is the vine dresser. And he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit. He, he who? My father who is the vine dresser. Clip, clip. Takes away. That's why I say, I'm run on people when they left. When they left for the father, take away enough of them. Because they're not here producing no fruit and they're not going to have me here repeating myself over and over to them. So if they're not producing for what I'm digging, the Lord prune them out so more people can come and produce fruit. Make room for fruitful people. Because we don't want bench warmers. We want people that put the word to work. Come on now. He says, every branch that bears fruit, what he does? Prune them that it may bear what? So he doesn't say because they're bearing fruit, leave them alone. They're good now. No, he said there's that training, what he called chastening of the Lord. Correction and training that goes into them becoming true children of God. Any vine you have that you don't train, you go and run all over the place like a creeper. And create a mess in the day of harvest to harvest it. So that's why I said there's a vine just to trim and to train the vine to run in a certain way. That when harvest time comes, they can go through and get the harvest without damaging the vine. That's why they never have been here. They have so much sticks, sticks, sticks. They're training it where to run and where to stay. You see it? So when one start to lean up his stick and one go join to another stick and make it impossible for him to go through to clear the vine, they have to clip that one off. They don't know those things, man. They just think, say, you just talk about branch and vine. But, but if they don't listen to those who teach, how will they know? They're going to imagine it of themselves and know it. I didn't imagine it myself and know it. The Lord showed me it to me to show it to you. Got it. Right? So he said, you have to trust that the Lord showing me things to show you. And I believe, see, I definitely come in sometime and show me some things we lead you astray. So then you have to pick and choose where you're going to take from me because you don't know when the bad part they come. So he said, Jesus made that clear. Either you call the tree good and it's fruit good. Are you call a tree bad and it's fruit bad, but don't say it's a good tree and sometimes it be a good fruit, sometimes it be a bad fruit. We just have to just know that your soil is there. Jesus never ordered anyone to eat from a tree like that. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Lord never said, take the good and leave the evil. The Lord said, don't eat of it. Nothing from it lets you die. That's a principle from the beginning before man sinned. That God has not changed. You hear what I'm saying to you? Right? So he said, no good tree can produce evil fruit. The same way he's saying that no person who is born of God can sin. Same thing. You know, the message is not change. First John 3 verse 9. It's, it's the same thing he said, if you're born of God, is the nature of God flowing through you? It's not coming after the Adamic nature because you say that's why you are born again. Woo! So it says Adam was born, was created. He wasn't born. Remember? Adam was created, he wasn't born. So then he said, Those who are born of Adam were born of Adam after Adam sin. So they are born of a corruptible source. But he says, when you are born again, you are not born again of a corruptible source. You say you are born again of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, which is Christ, the incorruptible seed. And he said that incorruptible seed in you and remain in you, you cannot sin. No, you can't tell the religious that. 
They ain't kick you out of them church. Then tell us, say, I lie with it, tell Because all are with it, sin. And all the past, they get up and say, Yeah, me sin since man, me have you asked the Lord to forgive me. Come on. Because they are still slaves. They are slaves trying to preach freedom. And they themselves don't free. You can't preach freedom and you don't free. What are you going to do for you? You end up paying, but you're not getting no freedom. Because slaves can't set slaves free, you know. Is they free? Have to set slaves free. So all the heroes they say was freedom fighters. Remember, you know, in dead as slave. But their life being that they died as slave, put pressure on the masters who were free to give freedom to the slave. So it's still not the slaves that died that give them the freedom. You must understand why the Lord sent Moses as a prophet and still tell Moses, said, doing good on Egypt. In can't leave the people them till Pharaoh say yes. He's the prophet. Pharaoh is not no prophet. But he have to wait and fear a word for free the slave. Slave can't free slave. He still run away a slave. And all when he run away, he's still a slave. And lot don't know that. That's why God raised up Moses differently. Moses wasn't raised up in the house of the slaves. He was raised up in the master's house like a master's boy. And then God bring him back and say, Are you go master over them. There's a different training for him. To bring them into what he was brought in. But God never sent somebody who's still born into it to try to get them free. God's principle has not changed. Oh, you got it? Yeah, man, so those who, who know say they're not sinning. Huh? Those who know say they're not sinning. And no, say they have ended sin already. They don't have no trouble with me, no. <laughs> they don't have no trouble with me. God confirm every word come out of my mouth to them. Sometimes they all tell me, say they hear it before they even come. And when I'm speaking, all I'm speaking is what the Lord was talking to them about in a day. It confirmed because they have that freedom. Free sons agree with free sons. He said, where the battle is coming from is, this, is the child of the band woman fighting against the son of the free. That's where the conflict is. It's not free fighting with free. Ah. He said, because they are still engaging in some things, it's causing them to malfunction. And they will not confess that they have that struggle. They just want to conclude it just to be difference of opinion and views. But these things in them causing them to malfunction. I had a dream with some pastors that were standing talking to me. And these pastors that uh, I connected and worked with for years. And was trying to reconnect back with them. And I heard them saying some things out of their mouth that was pretty much... And the edge of blasphemy. And, as, and, and the people them listening them saying it was taking it in, but they never hear no aim, but they know say they're trying to adapt to take it in. And I was like, Lord, how could they come to such a conclusion? And I hear the Lord speak right over it. I say, Because they are still engaging in sin. He says, Sin blurs their vision. Just think say false doctrine just come because men just have misunderstanding. Because they're still engaging in sin. All who come with cultic teaching, check out that part. If they were faithful in their obedience to the Lord, they would never go off. You get it? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't lead you into error. 
and he says as many who are led by the holy spirit these are the sons of god get it so no sons of god must lead you into freedom how slaves go lead you into freedom so paul said they promise freedom but they still engage in sin men have corrupt minds God have mercy. because they are doing this for fear man for attention and crowd and praises from people but when you're seeking the praises of God you're not busy with the people who are praise you or not you have your prayers from God <laughs> and I tell him already say God praise me so then could I beg still him boss God prays me because God speaks well of me. And when he speaks well and come in and said, have you known this? I'm any man like this man. No, praise that man. Yeah, man. And God thought that we about Job. God thought that we about Moses says the most humble man upon the face of the earth. God thought that we about Abraham saying, know that he'll be a man that raise up his children in the fear of the Lord. God that prays, man. I know God don't take praise. God he prays too. So, so we get a praise from God. We don't care what man wants to say. You understand anything? Yeah, man, if you live for the praise of God, you're living on a different level. Because you want to do what please him in spite of what others are saying. Get it? And that is an accurate position to have. And if you have that position with the Lord, the, and me have that position with the Lord, how we go to wrestle? You know, she will say, what somebody they tell lies, say they have it and don't have it. Because the same spirit would not wrestle against the same spirit. So it says, when there's a wrestling, it shows there's a different spirit operating. That's why I say, get the band woman and her son out. Because the conflict when staying at the house between those who are born of the flesh and those who are born of the promise. They will not agree. Hello. So do it pain Abraham's heart to see the first son go away with the mother. Because that was the first son. The one born after the flesh from a slave woman. And to send that woman away with his son. And not know anything will happen with his son after that. The Lord tell him, say, what your wife asks you to do is right. You get it? So, so it, it pains his flesh. But it was to fulfill the purpose God had over him. And the son that was born of the free woman, Isaac. Any other way would have corrupted the process and produced different results. Get it? So when we put God first, it don't matter if it's our own flesh and blood. It must be subjected to what the word demands of us. That is what shows we're part of the kingdom. You get it? Otherwise, we're going to compromise and say, would I do it? But because of them. And God not taking that answer. Because for him, the kingdom must come first. There's no other way. You got it? Stand with me, we're going to pray. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God is bringing us into a deeper level of understanding of the truth. Understanding of what? Of the truth because we can have things in our mind we believe is true but God brings greater clarity of what is truth because truth is truly defined by God hallelujah hallelujah so I encourage you to listen more to what the Lord is saying and yield to his word huh lay your all on the altar come on lift those hands to jesus
is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Hallelujah. Oh, Shabbasa. Glory to God. Is your all on the altar? Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God. Your heart does the spirit come to oh, you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield it. Oh. Come on, somebody raised up to the Lord like a love song. Is your own. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, in your heart. Does the spirit control? Yeah, yeah. You can own. Woo. And at peace. And sweet rest as you yield your body and soul. Oh, hallelujah. You have longed for sweet peace and for favor to increase. You have earnest the fervent me pray but you can not find rest nor be perfect until all on the altar is laid come on get on yeah, yeah. it's your own on the altar of sacrifice, lay oh, your heart. Does the spirit control? Yeah. You can all, whoo, hallelujah, and have peace and sweet rest. I like this one. It says, Would you walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment always? Oh, hallelujah. You must do His sweet will. You must do His sweet to be free from our ill. To be free. From all in on the altar, on the altar, your all you must lay. Hey, is your all? Hey, I feel it's coming up. Come on, somebody, give it all. Whatever it takes, whatever God requires of you. This is about pleasing Him. Not about pleasing yourself. Hey, you can hold on. And a peace, sweet rest. You know, oh, your body and your soul. Uh, what the Lord we never can know. What the Lord will bestow of the blessing for which we have prayed. Uh, till our body and soul, till our body and He that fully control, He that fully control, and, and are all on the altar. Come on, give it all to Jesus tonight. Is your hope 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody raise it up to the Lord. Yeah. There's a spirit control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can only be blessed. Hey. Hallelujah. And a peace. Yeah. And sweet rest. To heal him. Heal him tonight. Each man must learn to possess his vessel and give his body as a living sacrifice. He's your on the altar. Whoa, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Put it here. Let flesh burn. Let God be magnified. Rebo Sheba Sehelisan. Your spirit comes up. Hey! Hey! Can only be blessed. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, as you heal your body, your body and soul. Come on, somebody. Now God is calling you. Don't play with him. Don't mock the Holy Spirit. When he calls you, don't ignore him and hope that that voice fades away because he will leave you and if he leaves you there's no salvation for you come on somebody you got to open up let the Lord get full control over your life come on somebody this ain't no program this ain't no nice concert it's about your salvation it's about your deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let the spirit control. Hey. Let the spirit control. You can only be blessed and at peace hey. and see. As you yield them, somebody got to yield them. Your body and your soul tonight. Whatever it takes, Lord. Take over, Jesus. Yemosha Maseto. Break the freedom. Break the image. Break that sin. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God. Let your spirit control tonight. Let your spirit root up, block up, scatter, plunder the gears of the enemy. Somebody prays him in here. Somebody worship him. My God in heaven, do some Jesus. Do some Holy Ghost. Yes, God, yes, God. Root out every iniquity. Root out every self-will. Root out every pride. Root out every unbelief. And be magnified, O oh great. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Shan Psalm them tonight. Rabba Baba Babo Seke Terebesa Hey! Yalabo Seke Terebesa Anointing for the fresh Rabba Babo Seke Terebesa Yalabo Shaba Setu Break every chain Every curse, every spell Every edge And be magnified, O oh God <laughs> Be magnified, O oh God. Be magnified, O oh God. Let the words of our mouth uh, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your God. Hey! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody. Cry out to God. Leave no stone unturned. Let the Lord be magnified in the house. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody press. Somebody's coming through. Somebody's pressing in this. Somebody's losing the old them and gaining the new in Christ. Say, oh, shut up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, cry out to God. Let God hear you tonight. Forget those around you. Forget what they think about you. Focus your heart on King Jesus. And let him have his way in you tonight. Let the Holy Ghost bear bread with you. Let the Holy Ghost break ground. And bring you into the overflow of the presence of Almighty God. Rabbi Moshete. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Robo Sato. Come on, come on, come on. Worship, worship. Worship, 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 worship. Worship, push, push, push. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, God. <laughs> yes, God. Holy Ghost on fire. Hallelujah. Destroys every yoke and that lifts every burden. Let your glory <laughs> overflow our gates. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Anointing, loose every bird, every shackle. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes, God. Jesus, fresh oil, fresh oil, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, fresh, fresh, replenish, replenish. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
grace and favor. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fresh oil <laughs> in the name of Jesus. From the corner of her head to the sole of her feet. Revive and replenish. Saturate in your anointing, O oh God. Yes, even a child in the name of Jesus shall lead them. Jehoshaphat said to me, In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the anointing of Christ destroys the yoke and lifts every burden. In Jesus' name, fresh fire, wind of the Holy Spirit, blow in your soul tonight. In the name of Jesus, revive her again. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. In the name of Jesus. 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 Horababo Shatarabasa. In the name of Jesus, divine release. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Grace and favor over this young man. In the name of Jesus. Transform him inside out, oh God. Blaze of fire in his spirit. That will never be quenched by the end. Light a fire in his soul. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hebo Shatarabas. In the name of Jesus, anointing and grace upon her life now, Lord. Grace in time of need. Grace in time of trouble. Grace. Hallelujah. And her double for her trouble. She will see the best of her days in your house. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, somebody praise him in the house. In the name of Jesus. 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 Out of her belly flow rivers of living waters. Be as a fountain springing up unto eternal life in the name of Jesus open the floodgates of heaven now Lord and 
let it rain. That's it, that's it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mama, 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 Yes, God. Unveil your glory. Unveil your glory, Lord. Smite the enemy and drive him back now. In the name of Jesus. Grant her true deliverance in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody praise God. Somebody give him the praise of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come here, Sister Henry. Come here, Sister Henry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the same God. Yesterday. Today and forever. And there is nothing hidden from you. Even what is in the dark you see as clear as the day. Our lives are like an open book before you. But I pray that grace will be administered to this woman. That in her weakness, your strength. Be made perfect. Her from every infirmity, from every shackle, from every shame, liberate her spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for who the Son set free. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Anointing and fire. Over your gates. Over your house. Over your family. Over your husband. Over your ministry. That God will rekindle the fire. That burns. Intercession. Intercessory fire. Somebody praise God right now. Open up your mouth and praise. Fire. Fire, 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 in the name of Jesus, fire, yeah, loose, Let her go. Rabba baba mo sheke le besata. Yele be le mo sara basete. Yele ke lo seba. Rabba i mo sere le besa. Luz.
somebody praise him raise up a praise warrior praise warfare praise glorious praise victorious praise how many clear victory in the house Victory, 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 victory. And every side we turn around for the devil meant for evil. Around for good. Mm. 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 scorpion and serpent we crush them on their feet we crush their head we crush their eggs hey what caca trees poisonous venomous serpents we crush you Render you powerless for the glory of the Lord is in this house. And we have seen his glory. The one who died for us. He is in the midst of his people. Come on, lift those hands and thank him. <laughs> thank you. Come on, thank him from your heart. Thank him from your heart, man. Come on. He's already done it. Devil can't lock any door that he closed. And he can't open any door that God closed. He can't lock what God opened. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, come on, praise him some more. God multiplied measure over your life and I tell you grace is released for divine shift over your life so take a look again because God has come through one more time Here 
places of my heart oh god anointing his gratefulness yeah. come on say it again grateful for the things that i'm grateful grateful for the victory Just to hear you Blowing from my heart Blowing from hey. Issues of my mind hey. Blowing from my heart say. Worship him on that. Somebody give him a praise. Hey. Hey. Now somebody else said to me and said, Grateful. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Said, Grateful, 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 grateful. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Gratefulness is hurting from my heart. Come on, sir. Anybody still grateful? Grateful heart. Blowing from. as a prey to the enemy's teeth but for revealing your love to us even while we are in the mess not for us to remain in it but to draw us by those cards of love out of that into sweet fellowship with you through your son Jesus Christ and the work of your Holy Spirit we are thankful. We praise you for this great opportunity. And it's for us to use it for your glory. And not to scoff at the opportunity as if it's common and something to be treated as cheap. But to understand that it is valuable. And we must treat it with respect and reverence and give you glory in all we do 
that shows we truly appreciate the price you paid and the offer that you made to this great, wonderful salvation. We thank you for that. And we praise you, Father, for what you have done tonight in our hearts. We still keep an open ear to you to hear further revelation and instruction for greater fellowship, greater communion, and greater walk with you by faith as we trust our lives to you. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise one more time. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. It's time to release you. We're going to do so right now. I'll give you, of course, a chance to so as the Lord has laid upon your heart. Hallelujah. And encourage you to do as the Lord tells you. Praise God. While you're doing so, I'll just give the last word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online and watching an increase in faith, Deliverance Ministry International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We have a book out there released since here called the Gospel of the Kingdom. It's tagged the Gospel that Jesus preached. We want every believer to get their hands on it because we believe no matter how strong you are in the Lord or how much fruitful you are in the Lord, the word that will come from the Lord that will prune you, prune certain of your thoughts and beliefs and tweak certain of your, your work in the ministry that will help you to become more fruitful. And Jesus did say that, that those who produce fruit, he prunes that they bear more fruit. And the Hebrew writer said, we should not despise the chastening of the Lord. For if we endure it, we will produce the peaceable fruit of righteousness and be partakers of his holiness. Praise God. So I encourage you to get more in the word because we live by the word. And we don't live by bread alone, and you know that. So let's get more in the word. We have that book out there. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. The Gospel that Jesus preached. You can order it online through Amazon.com. Go on Amazon.com and type in in the search box, Richard V. Fagan. And the, the book will come up, and you can order the book online and read it at your convenience. You can also order it through Kindle to have the information downloaded to you. Praise God. And to bless your most holy faith in the Lord. Praise God. And those who want to see more of the teachings, of course, you can look for us on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan on Facebook, and you'll be plugged into our live stream services that are streamed all on Facebook. Praise God. And you can, of course, see the recordings on our YouTube channel. Look for Richard B. Fagan on our YouTube channel and subscribe. you see the teachings there. We've added some more verses for you to check word with word and to get a greater understanding of the knowledge of your faith in the Lord. Amen. So I wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if you want to know more about the ministry, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's what? Increasingfaithintl.org. You can, of course, send your friends your prayer requests there or your uh, praise report or the ministry will be blessing you. We want to hear from you. We believe that more we connect together more things will be get done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So be strong in him and in the power of his might. Praise God. Any further questions? Of course, you can call Richard Fagan at 876-839-9390, 876-557-2427. And of course, you can, those who wish to send their love gifts and, and tithes and offering can send to the ministry to our website. Looking forward to connect with you more, to build your most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your mind. Praise God. You're blessed tonight. Oh, praise God. Time to release you now. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for your word you have declared tonight and the grace you have released over our lives as we walk by faith and not by sight. We are receiving more deposit of you through your word that is spirit and is life and as we embrace that spirit and life through your word you're bringing us into greater relationship and fellowship with you 
for your Holy Spirit and your word and make us ears of your kingdom and those that will reign with you, O oh God, in the age to come. And we thank you for what you're doing now, for what you have done and for what you're about to do as we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, lift those hands and praise him in the house. <laughs> praise God and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Good. Have a great night in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.